Hello everyone, we are here at Shell Lumber choosing the wood for our dog bowl project. They look so cute! You guys liked it? It's awesome! I liked it, I think it's awesome. This is their old uh, bowl stand and like you see these black rings around it they don't come out we clean it and clean it and they stay there i don't think the person who made it for the store i don't think they steal the wood and that is getting there so we really don't like this anymore so we want to make a new one to look prettier and go more cohesive with the house i think i'm gonna be using the same legs this one half yeah buddy that one is yours right is that one yours? First we're gonna put this one apart like that we save the legs because we are gonna be using the legs as well and we're gonna be using this uh, all part as a template. Yeah, eight and three four. We're gonna use the same size bowls, right? Yes. Are you worried about your bowl? Are you worried about your bowl? That it destroy it? Oh no! This one we're gonna make it a little tiny bit bigger like that you could see better the design that we're gonna be making. We are working outside so he's not using right now a face mask because we have this dust extractor with HEPA filters that take away all the sawdust and most of the wood chips. Remember that the one in the middle have to be really in the middle because of the bowls. I forgot about the bowls. I forget. I completely forgot about the bowls. No, so we're gonna have to go more towards the edge. There's more than likely. That one. Are, yeah. The bowls are going. Here. You should mark where the bowls are. I have to cut it off first because I don't know exactly where the bowls are going yet.
I'm gonna end up making it more like 15 or 20. Okay? Okay. Okay. We're at 24 and a half because we said that we're gonna cut it down to 24. Here we are using Tight Bond Premium Wood Glue. It's water resistant, which is really important, especially for this type of project. This one is is for indoor and outdoor use. And what we're doing now is putting the dominoes to connect our wood and make the connection stronger. The glue, in a lot of cases, is stronger than the wood. We have a helper back there. It was getting rusted in some places. Yeah. This was from Home Goods. It doesn't look like a really good quality oh, stand. It's all right. It's the steel is well It's not straight though. Look at this. <laughs> That's the only thing, but it works. I wish it was like two inches taller. We're gonna be spray painting the legs with a metal finish in gold so they look more modern and pretty. I really don't like this color that they have right now and I think in gold they're gonna look a lot better. We're gonna sand down the old uh, wood that we had to see if we could fix it and make two stands like that we have one in my office and one downstairs so let's see what happens We have used two different grids and still is not coming out. That's how deep inside the wood was the watermarks.
And the other option, if you don't have one of these, you can use a chisel. <laughs> This is the intermission of the project. Yes. But in news us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's time to go back to work, Daddy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? Oh my god. <laughs> We are using the old stand as a template to make the marks where the new holes are going to be. He's making a tiny hole for the jigsaw to make the circles perfectly and then with the router we are gonna make them smooth.
you could finish at here and you add like a finishing so in, you make it water seal and like that when water comes in the wood it doesn't get messed up like the old one but we are not gonna stop here we want to add a little bit of resin on the back part to make it look like a beach table kind of thing well that's what we hope we practiced the other day with another piece and it came out pretty decent so we're gonna be doing it now on this one Okay, so we're gonna use total boat and it's a two, two to one uh, ratio. This is part one, this is part two. And then we're gonna use the cup that has the measurings on it already to get the exact measurements that we need for the port. Uh, these are the pigments that we're gonna use in the epoxy pour. And we're gonna try to do like uh, beach waves, uh, like an ocean kind of theme thing. So we're gonna go first with like a midnight blue. That's gonna be the darker, like deeper ocean part. Then we're gonna put this uh, cobalt blue. So it's gonna be really, really blue, really deep. And then we'll go with this Bora Bora blue so it starts transitioning to that lighter color. And then we're gonna finish it off with the white pigment so it can look like the waves are crashing into the, to the sand. So hopefully it comes out good and we'll, we'll see. What we're going to do is this, these cups, um, a lot of them already come with uh, certain measurements already pre-done. So we're doing two to one. So all you have to do is look, part A is, is the first side, and we'll go one part this side, and then part B is that side. So it's really simple to get the measurements. So you'll just fill up part A all the way to that one, and then you'll fill up the part B to that one after. And then mix it up and you're good to go. right here and now we are at that part one mix it mix it right. mix well and mix it for a long time a lot of people mix it for a few seconds and that's not done you have to really get in there yeah and make sure to, to the scrape, sides. Yeah, make sure to scrape the sides because it'll stick over there and that's where your project goes bad and whenever you think it's done mixing do more like double it up double the, the, the amount of mixing the stuff doesn't set that quickly that you have to like be rushing that fast unless you have a really i guess maybe a fast setting epoxy um you have you have a pretty uh, a pretty long working time so especially for a small project like this you, you have plenty of time This is not going to be enough. You're going. You want me to go make some more then? Yeah.
Yeah. You want a little bit of the dark one too? Very little, yeah. I already did like so where I want to the And the next step is to hit it with the heat gun and that'll take out bubbles if there's any like sitting inside. And the other thing it does is it kind of like pushes because the, the heat gun has a little bit of air, kind of like a blow dryer. It's just not as powerful and it'll blow some of the stuff around and it'll mix it. So let's see what, what happens. Do you think we should go more front or there is fine? Because I'm out of wood is fine, right? Okay. Thank you. Oh, it looks cool. I like it. So the epoxy that we're using right now for the table is a low VOC, low odor formula for indoor or shop use. But either way, we're using our Dyson filter that measures. It'll actually let us know if there's any VOCs in the air. And if there is, it will it'll go filtering it out. So we put it pretty close to where we're working, just in case, just to be on the safe side. And while we were doing it, we had masks on. And this area, is uh, it's indoors, it's really well ventilated. We have a few uh, ceiling um, vents from our air conditioner right on top of it. So where it's at is very, very well ventilated. Um, but just keep that in mind if you're doing this yourself, just to be in a well ventilated area. So the reason we were doing that, there was a little bubble that had came um, almost to the surface and usually heat will um, pop the bubble, it'll make it rise up. And you can use the heat gun. Uh, the problem with the heat gun is that it'll keep pushing everything around. Um, with the torch, it doesn't really do that that much. So it'll just heat up that one area and it'll pop the bubble. This is the five hour mark. What do you guys think? Does it look good? It's almost completely dry. I'm not gonna touch it on the top, just in case it's gooey, but it feels com almost completely dry. So by tomorrow morning, we should be able to add the little screws to the metal part and they use their bowl that they've been dying to get back. <laughs> well, we also gotta seal the rest of the wood. Gotcha. We're gonna put a finish on it, seal it up from water. I think it looks kind of cool. And this under here was the test piece that we did. It's yeah. like a pizza, um, how do you call this? A pizza? I don't know. Yeah, pizza. That's a pizza thing. <laughs> Good 
looks cool. All right, we'll check in again later. You mean tomorrow? So today is day three of our build, and the epoxy is already dry. Look how beautiful it came out. I love it. All is done for us now is to shave the excess in the corners to put the screws to screw it to the legs and to put the finishing in the wood to put the weather seal so when they drink and the droplets fall in the wood it doesn't get ruined it doesn't come up very very hard i don't know how we're going to stick it up oh we got the gold flakes <laughs> At least the ones that I care are the ones that you will see in the sides. Put your finger in front of the blade. I'm sorry. Oh, I was going like this. <laughs> I can fit you. We took a break to check on YouTube to see how other people were taking out their resin from the wood and we saw they are using the heat gun to make it softer and then the chisel. So we are trying that now. Alright, so now we, we already took off all of this here and now we got to take off the rest here and going around and then we'll start to clean up the sides as well. Alright, the whole top is looking pretty good. Well, the bottom, I mean. Got pretty much all of it off. There might be like a couple of little marks. You see there, like a little black mark. That's okay. We're going to uh, sand it down a little bit more after. And that'll be completely gone. And then we'll put the finish on and you'll never see that. So for the finish, we're gonna be using Simple Finish. Um, it says it's non-toxic and it's low VOC. So it's perfect for our project. And it's a hardener, so it'll get hard and it'll be not waterproof, but it'll be water resistant enough that if water falls on top of it, we can just wipe it down and that'll be all right. And the nice thing about this finish is it's super simple to put on. I mean, it's in the name, right? Simple finish. You just put it on, and I think after like 15 minutes, wipe off the excess, and you're done. That's it. A lot of other finishes, you need to apply it, then like sand it down when it dries, apply it again. And this one is not like that, so I like this that finish for this.
It's been 15 minutes, so we are doing a second coat of the oil finish. It looks so pretty. All right, so I'm gonna use an old t-shirt that I broke up into a bunch of little pieces um, to wipe it down, to wipe off the excess that's on there that didn't get soaked up by the wood. And let's see how it comes out. All right, let's flip it around and do the underside. Then we just gotta let it sit for like an hour and then we can move it around and do whatever to it. Take pictures. But that's the finish. That's literally how it will look. It doesn't change from that now. Here is the final product. It looks so, so pretty. I love it. 